This is WTAP News at 6 with James Sparvero. Making news this weekend from Athens County. A man in charge of enforcing the law is now accused of breaking it. A new destination and possibly a new airline. Big changes may be coming to the Mid-Ohio Valley Regional Airport. As the news center's Todd Belcher tells us, those potential destinations are likely familiar to area travelers. All the way from Afghanistan, thanks to technology, two soldiers see their children graduate today. Good evening, I'm James Sparvero. We live streamed the graduation through our web channel, making dad a world away feel like he was right here in the Mid-Ohio Valley. Danielle Staub has more. The victim's name has not been released. On a much lighter note tonight, we're getting our first look outside. It's our chance to take a look at the forecast. We go over to the Weather Center with our own Abby Schrader. She's got our first look outside. Hi, Abby. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, Josh. That's all the time for our broadcast tonight. We hope you've enjoyed us, folks. Come back tomorrow. Daybreak starts at 530. Until then, good night. Police say the suspect hopped this fence. He ran down this hill into the Kroger's parking lot and into the store. The group collected nearly 900 signatures on this petition, hoping to take a stand against oil and injection wells like here in Alexander Township. The costs they're being forced to pay and the cuts they're being forced to make are weighing heavily on the minds of Mid-Ohio Valley businessmen and women. But perhaps their biggest fear, not knowing what happens next. A day of helping out at the park, it's not all about hard work. It's also about having fun, right girls? Yeah! yeah. Hey, hey, no slacking though, you missed a spot. Come on now, elbow grease. Hey. By a show of hands, how many of you guys have your own phones, your own cell phones? Brittany, well, it's a potentially developing tragedy this afternoon in Belpre. A quick update, that man not confirmed yet to be dead. But I understand from the Washington County Sheriff's Office and investigators who are on scene, that man is clinging to life. John and Ashley, again from the Board of Directors, the big news today, offices behind me, here at the Volunteer Action Center closing at the end of this month. But as you just heard, it's not all bad news for some of their key programs. Architects have chosen Fort Borman Hill, where I'm at right now, as potentially one of two sites where they may build this park. I don't know, maybe I'm at home plate right now. Maybe I'm down the third baseline. Maybe I'm just first in line for the hot dogs next season. If you look over my left shoulder, you'll see that water tower out there maybe about 400 feet into center field. That would make a nice landmark. And then over on the left far past your screen, what you can see across the street up here at Fort Borman, a lot of space for parking. John, we're going to be hanging out with these guys a little bit longer. If I can survive, if I can survive, John, back to you. I wasn't prepared to the fullest. Just one month on the job, the very first animal call for 21-year-old Tyler Masters shocked him beyond belief. A troubling, bizarre, and frightening experience he'll never forget. And then I saw it and it was just kind of, is this real kind of feeling? What he saw on Gladstone Street, a small dog, decapitated, its head 10 or 15 feet apart from its body. I was numb most of the ride home, just that somebody has the capability of doing that to, to an animal is just mind-blowing. Masters brought the carcass to the Humane Society where it was cremated. Meanwhile, Parkersburg police took 32-year-old suspect Jack Kingery to the hospital where he's undergoing a medical evaluation. Like Aubrey, this Dotson in my hand, Kingery's dog was of the toy breed, a Yorkshire Terrier, commonly known as a Yorkie. One dog that animal experts say is completely defenseless against animal cruelty. It's a very disturbing case. Michelle Earle is the Humane Society's executive director. We take animal cruelty very seriously, and it's a very sad occurrence that it happened here, and we hope that there's some prosecution that occurs with this case. Police say Kingery will be charged with a felony count of animal cruelty once the medical evaluation is complete. <laughs> James Sparvero, WTAP News, Parkersburg. One World War II veteran is blowing out 91 candles, and tonight we're sharing his incredible story of service, survival, and love. Happy birthday to you. Yay! 91 on the birthday cake, marking 91 years of one remarkable journey. Jacob Lehman grew up in Cairo during the Great Depression. At 20, he left home, joining the Army during the greatest conflict 
of our time. And I'll never forget, my dad wasn't very emotional, you know, and he took my hand and he says, be careful. I'll never forget that either. Lehman's tour of duty took him through North Africa to the invasion of Sicily, the famed Normandy landings, and the Battle of the Bulge. A recipient of the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star, it wasn't until the war's end when he won his greatest prize, the love of his life, Eleanor, at an Indiana hospital. She come running over to me. I never saw her before. And she had never seen me before. She come over, grabbed my arm. She said, here's my friend. And this drunk comes staggering over. He says, that's my girl. I said, I'm down. I said, buddy, move. Get out of here. Following his service, Jacob worked 25 years building aircrafts with an aerospace company in New York, most notably the Apollo Lunar Module. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Decades later, celebrating 68 years of marriage, the Lehmans have five children. Love you, Dad. Eleven grandchildren. There's my baby. <laughs> and seven great-grandchildren. Do you understand or embrace the significance when people call your generation the greatest generation? What does that mean to you? <laughs> it means a lot. It was a generation that tried to make things easier for everybody else. And I'm proud that I'm a part of it. An American hero and one of our own. Happy birthday, Mr. Lehman. And also an early birthday wish to his wife, Eleanor. The Lehmans are just 10 days apart. That means Eleanor's 91st birthday will be next Monday, the 28th. We're having a great time. And you know what? As we look to the skies here, uh, the rain's really holding off, and we're really enjoying it. We've got dozens of teams, over 100 golfers. I'm here with the executive director of SW Resources, Miss Tara Klein. Tara, how are you, and how's this event going today? I am fantastic, and I am absolutely thrilled that the rain has pushed on. We have sunny skies out now, so it's going very well. We do have 28 teams of four, so that's about 112 players that we have out here today, hopefully enjoying the weather as much as I am. Oh, absolutely. Everybody is golfing happening all around us right now, some folks over here at the putting green. Let's talk about how this event today will really help the mission of your organization. Absolutely. For all of the money that's raised here today that SW receives, we are able to provide more and more opportunities to individuals with disabilities. We're able to provide our services, job coaching, um, job placement, those types of things that really help our individuals be um, productive members of society and have that job. And they're able to reach their fullest potential with our help and, and with help from events like this. Awesome stuff. And then later in the year, you guys celebrate 50 yes. years in October for SW Resources. And we're here. It's been a decade or so since we've been doing the golf outing. Where has the time gone? I know. It flies, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brittany. We're going to have more tonight from the golf outing at 5 and 6. Until then, we'll send it back to you.